All right, let's keep going. I'm not saying that's how it should be. I'm saying that's how it is. This is a really good video on copyright. So, how do we fix it? What's up, world? It's your boy, Tom. Oh, come on. This video is sponsored by Curiosity Stream and by this, my new Nebula streaming series that you can watch for free when you join. More on that later. Sell out. What's up, world? It's your boy, Tom React. Let's see what this prat has to say. A few disclaimers before we start. While this video has been proofed and fact-checked by a team of legal experts, I am not a lawyer. I'm going to be back in a second. A Sorry, Tom Scott, advice. I'm peeing. Yeah, I can tell that, mate. I'm also talking a lot about YouTube and Google, companies that I benefit from enormously. Google even sponsored an entire series on this channel last year. Chill! I'm friends with a few YouTube employees. Of course you are. So while all the words here are my own, YouTube don't even know I'm making this. You should know that if you're one of the outliers who's been screwed over by YouTube's copyright system, yeah, you will probably have a different view of parts of this. Although I hope you'll still agree with my conclusion. With all that said, enjoy the show. Get on with it. Not you. I realize saying YouTube's copyright system isn't broken is a controversial claim to make, when every week there seems to be a new headline about how a YouTube creator is being screwed over by false copyright claims or mistaken identity or deliberate copyright abuse. I'm not saying that the system is perfect. It's far from perfect, and I'll talk about that too. But I don't think it's fundamentally broken. In May 2019, a YouTube Minecraft player called Ollie had hundreds of his videos claimed by music label Warner Chapel using YouTube's content ID system. His post about it made a lot of people righteously angry. He got permission to use a track from an independent composer as his intro music, and now a big corporation was claiming every video and taking all his revenue. Popular websites went so far as to claim that Ollie was the victim of outright theft, since 25% of his revenues were directed to Warner Chapel. But the follow-up wasn't seen by nearly as many people. Those claims were entirely legitimate. Yes, Ollie got permission to use that music from its composer, but that composer had sampled another piece of music that was owned by Warner Chapel without a license. So the permission that Ollie got was entirely useless. Warner Chapel was right, and Ollie was wrong. So here's how that should have worked in the world that current copyright law was designed for. First, everyone involved would have been part of a large company with a legal team. Lawyers from the music label would have contacted the lawyers for the video company, uh, and they would have said, uh, what's, what's going on? You, you didn't license that. And the video company lawyers would have gone, Oh, I'm sorry. I had no idea. We bought that license in good faith from a third party. We should both talk to them. At which point the third company's lawyers would get a very worrying phone call. Ah! And all the mess would almost certainly have been settled out of court, maybe by backroom dealings, maybe by teams of lawyers sending formal letters to each other. That was the world that copyright law was designed for, because individuals couldn't make things that were viewed by millions without corporate support. You needed a publisher or a broadcaster or a huge production company, and those companies had lawyers. The world has moved on, and copyright law hasn't. And the result is that when something like this happens, and also the other side of this obviously is that all art is derivative, which is part of the main reason, at least for someone like myself, to fucking despise copyright in general. Understandably, certain parts of copyright law are there to protect small creators, even though they never do, okay? That is the only justification that these fucking demons over at the tippy top use to be like, oh, we're protecting small creators. No, the fuck you're not. You're just using that as a reason or as an example uh, as to why you're doing this. But the real reason is, cha-ching, money, okay? In the world of relatively tiny independent online creators, we have to work around what the law is meant to do. Music has two main copyrights. Baby ass take legit 12 year old brain. Um, yes. This is a baby ass take. I know, unlike you, a big brained capitalist man who understands the world is rough and vicious and that copyright has to be there and that mega corporations are totally doing this for honorable reasons. I have the naivete of a child who wishes, nay, believes that there could be a better tomorrow, a better future, but no. That's, that's baby shit. 
you're a rugged individualist and you're a fucking big brained adult. Not an adult, an adult, okay? For understanding the way that the system is and seeing that inequality and even defending the way that the system is, despite not having a fraction of the fucking returns from that very same system, despite maybe even recognizing that that system cucks your content in the future as well. The way that people defend copyright on the internet over the past couple of days, you would have thought that, you know, these motherfuckers are getting dividends, okay? They're getting residuals. They're getting fucking dividends. They're sitting on the boards of all these corporations. They're at Fox sitting on the board. They're Rupert motherfucking Murdoch, baby. But no, they're not. They're just angry fucking little losers. That's just the reality. Just like that guy is. First, there's the copyright on the composition itself. All the parts of a work that can be written down. So, lyrics and notes. And then second, there's a copyright on each individual recorded performance. So I can sit here and I can play Packlebell's Canon in D without having to pay any licensing fees because Packlebell died in 1706 and his work is now in the public domain in the pool of works where the copyright has expired. His music is now free for anyone to use without payment and without credit, which is brilliant. But if I'm not playing it, I'm actually using a modern recording of it, then it doesn't matter that the composition is in the public domain. Someone has added their own hard work playing it, along with the work of a production team making it sound good. And that recording is under a separate copyright that needs licensing to use in a video like this. Songwriter after songwriter after songwriter has used Packlebell's Canon in D to the extent that it's now a cliché and no one's had to pay Packlebell or his family a penny in centuries. But that doesn't mean any of the modern songs based on it are in the public domain. There is new work there and I can't use those modern songs in this video to demonstrate that unless I'm actually criticizing them. You also literally don't even know half the time, half the time, and this happens with classical compositions a lot, I'll play classical music on here, even though I'm very careful about DMCA for obvious reasons, right? And I don't ever play like fucking music on here because they're really aggressive with their DMC, uh, with their pursuits uh, and enforcement of copyright. Sometimes when you play a uh, a, a classical composition, it's made by a, a, a modern composer and you don't even know it. You think it's fucking copyright, right? All of a sudden, fucking boom, dude. You're clapped. You could get clapped. That's insane. On that point, Maroon 5's Memories is an infuriating composition that uses the start of the melody of Canon in D but never resolves it, which means that it has the same stuck-in-your-head effect as the jingle from Alfred Bester's The Demolished Man, and I hate it. Coolio See You When You Get There was a lukewarm lead single from a third album that obviously did far better with a naive world audience than it ever did with its actual target market. There's a reason it went platinum in New Zealand. And The Farms All Together Now is actually a pretty good song despite the incongruity between its subject matter and its style but it's been completely destroyed by repetitive and unnecessary cover versions and football chants. Criticism and review, there we go. That is the sort of thing that's considered fair use under US law and fair dealing under the much more strict UK law. But I had to censor the album art of those songs because I wasn't criticizing and reviewing the art and the art is covered under separate copyright. In 2009, Andy Bio, then one of the directors of Kickstarter, released an 8-bit chiptune version of the best-selling jazz album of all time, Miles Davis' Kind of Blue. He got a license from the music publisher. Dude, 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 where the fuck is this person? Stop, okay? Hassan, I'm begging you, just watch Lindsay Ellis' Addison Kane video instead? No, dude, I don't, I don't want to. And I don't care if he's pro-copyright in the end. We're watching him describe the fucking the, the, the steps of how copyright works, okay? Ultimately, I'm not completely anti-copyright anyway, okay? I hate copyright in its current form, but if copyright was created to intentionally protect small content creators from being abused and used, okay? Then that's fine. There can be a practical and even moral utility for copyright, but I, I don't like it, especially because the people that created it are wealthy mega corporations, okay? And they created it for wealthy mega corporations to continue 
farming additional uh, streams of revenue. Okay, that's it. He called it kind of bloop. It was all above board. But he settled out of court for more than $30,000 with Jay Maisel, the photographer who took the iconic photograph on the original album cover. Kind of Bloop's album art was a pixelated version of that album cover. Bio thought it was fair use, Maisel said it wasn't, and Maisel had lawyers. To quote Bio, the fact that I settled is not an admission of guilt. This was the least expensive option available. Because copyright lawyers and copyright lawsuits are very, very expensive. Expensive enough that that isn't the album cover. That is a stock photo that looks kind of like the album cover because I am taking no risks. I don't know if that pixel art was fair use. If someone took your greatest work, ran it through a pixelation filter and then sold it, I don't think it's entirely unreasonable to think you've been ripped off. The line of fair use is very fuzzy and both sides can have very strong and conflicting arguments. This is the reason why I think it's like kind of fucked up in its entirety though, because it's like, again, it goes back to the argument that all art is derivative. And then we arrive at NFTs, which is, you know, this video was made, I guess, around the same time NFTs came out. So I guess he could have a criticism on NFTs as well in this, but anyway, let's keep going. That's the job of the courts to solve if both sides can afford it. And there wasn't even a music video involved there. That is a whole separate problem. There is something called a compulsory license for selling and performing just music. But if you want to publish a video to go with someone else's song, even if it's just a video of you performing it on a ukulele in your bedroom, that requires a separate synchronization license. And the copyright holder has an absolute right to say no to that. YouTube has always had a lot of people uploading cover songs, singing and performing the music that they love. I'm hoping I'm they'll sure get noticed. I'm sure you've already heard the tragic by news. Talent you might... not by lawyers. A lot we'll, of... do the, we'll do the most uh, in a second. Modern pop singers this. got their start on YouTube, but the legal baseline for doing that outside the YouTube bubble, if you just filmed yourself and put it up somewhere else online, well, the baseline is that you'd have to pay for an expensive license or you get sued and you lose. Or more likely, you get a cease and desist letter, you pay a bit of money to make the lawyers go away, and you... Drop out of the music industry disillusioned. And you can't get away with it by changing the lyrics. A parody is probably not fair use unless you're directly criticizing the original, and even then it's questionable. Weird Al Yankovic, the most popular parody artist in history, licenses the songs that he parodies. There are lots of lengthy law journal articles asking whether he needs to, but it's better safe than sorry. And yeah, I wouldn't fancy his chances if it actually went to court. The worst case scenario of doing an unlicensed song parody on YouTube is that you get sued and you lose. Because under current copyright law, you are in the wrong. I'm not saying that's how it should be. I'm saying that's how it is. And most people won't have the money to even start to defend a case like that. Now, YouTube has a workaround for this. Content ID, I'll get to that later. And if Bro, this is the fucking funniest. This is the main reason he drifted away from political discussions and potentially being shown to be wrong about something scares him shitless. So he just discusses stuff with chatters. He can ban or people that don't know anything about politics. No, dude, because perhaps you're fucking annoying. Okay. People who think they know everything about politics don't actually know a single fucking fraction of a shit. Oh my Lord, dude, please don't. Uh, mods, you have every, you can ban everyone that fucking links, especially like a, like a LSF destiny thread, please. It's such a stu- that is a stone lock. And that's not even educational in its purpose. Unless the conversation that we're having is about how fucking debate lords are pathetic, annoying, and, and unproductive overall because they hold on to zero moral values and are simply just trying to win an argument while throwing- slinging as much shit as possible. Okay? It's just like, I don't want to do that, man. It's- it's terrible. It hurts- my fucking core it hurts my soul i just i don't want to do that and i personally don't even care if people think like it's because i'm running away from uh a, you know reasonable debate or whatever i know that a lot of chatters in here probably still have that like weird brain where they think you know debates are actually where the truth comes out or whatever but it's not okay let's just keep going if you're not actually using the original piece if you're just reminding the viewer of it just getting close enough in your parody then you're probably in the clear YouTube creators who change just the lyrics of songs to do parodies often say, oh, but it's, it's transformative, it's fair use, it's for criticism, they can't claim copyright over it, they're making a false, <laughs> they're making a false claim. And look, if, if you're taking a Katy Perry song 
and changing the words to be about something other than criticising Katy Perry or the song itself, it's likely not fair use. The same way that big movie companies can't take small songwriters' work, change the lyrics and put the result in movies without paying and say, oh, but it's transformative, it's fair use, look, we change the lyrics. And it may seem unfair that the law holds kids on YouTube messing around to more or less the same legal standard as Hollywood studios. In public opinion, there is definitely a big difference there. People smile at small creators taking content from big companies well outside fair use, but never the other way around. And that's the reason that some small-time reaction YouTuber hey, hey. can take a five-second clip from a movie and use it for a cheap punchline, even if it's not criticism and review. But I'm damn sure if a movie studio took a clip of a Reaction Channel's video and used it in a film without permission, there would be lawyers lining up to take the case. Yeah, you're right. This is 100% this is true as well. So when I was at the Young Turks, this is something that we learned, which is that technically, even when you are literally using a fucking, um, uh, I don't know, using a song or using a fucking type, uh, using like a five second clip from a movie or using a five second clip from like a CNN article or whatever the fuck, you absolutely are like you unless you are directly criticizing like the style that the commentary on CNN is engaging in, you are technically not doing fair use. For example, if you are using local TV footage to spruce up your content, even though you're technically modifying it, that's not considered fair use. Okay. That's not considered fair use. Unless your, your uh, video is about how local TV is reactionary and you're showing a piece of footage from local TV to say, look how reactionary they're being by choosing this specific frame to film. Okay? Just make your own content, lazy bum. Uh, suck my dick. That is the dumbest person on the internet. This person literally spent a 42 minute descri video describing how complicated this process is and how the things that you un understand as people making their own content, every single one of your fucking favorite content creators is technically in violation of copyright because of the way that the copyright laws are quite literally structured and created. And that is kind of the entire point of this video, but you're too stupid to wait for this video to fucking finish. And you have to come in here and just say, make your own content. No one would be able to make their own content if everybody enforced copyright in its maximum purpose, okay? This is my content. I own it. You hear that, Disney? Right. Remember, tomorrow I'm reacting to the new Star Wars trailer. Maybe there should be different treatment there. But in current copyright... So why aren't people shitting on XQC? Because they like XQC and they do not like me. Please stop asking this question. It's a very obvious uh, answer. You already know the answer. And the reason why you're asking is so that I repeat it over and over again. People aren't shitting on XQC, but they're shitting on me because they like XQC. XQC's Pepega like they are. They're like, oh, poggers, that's my juicer. I like XQC as well. The reason why people are shitting on me instead of Miskif and XQC is because they like Miskif and they like XQC. They are gamers, like they are. They, the, the, the way that people fancy themselves. The reason why they're shitting on me is because I'm a hypocritical political streamer. How dare I? Blah, 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 blah. Shut the fuck up. That's just what it is. You know what it is. Lord, ah. there isn't. If you take a photograph off a stock image site or from some photographer's... No, I'm not victimizing myself. I'm just basically fucking telling you what it is, okay? People are asking questions, and I'm answering them. You watch a video, then talk like you made the video the fuck out of here. Okay, I'm just gonna start banning people. Flickr account, and you just copy it into your blog post or your company website, you might well get an email from a service called Pixie. They use automatic systems to scan the web, detect people who've used photographs without permission, and then they send legal letters threatening court action and demanding payment. And legally, they are in the right. They're using strong arm tactics and they're in it for the money. And in some cases, they are threatening someone who has absolutely no idea about copyright and genuinely thinks that stuff on the web is free to take. There are lots of threads online with people going, ah, ah, what's, what's happening? I, I didn't know, ah, how do I make this go away? To which the answer is, pay up. 
Photography is an art, and an expensive one, and yeah, until we live in magical, post-scarcity Star Trek space communism, you shouldn't just be able to rip off a photographer's copyrighted work and use it. Except that... But we should be able to, and that's what the internet does, and that's kind of good. Without that, like, if all manner of copyright enforcement were straight up fucking uphold it to the maximum degree that is legally the right of all of those copyright owners you would rarely ever have any kind of new good art all you motherfuckers that cry about uh how the mcu is so boring now or how uh you know the free guy movie kind of sucked because it's just all a flex on ip or space jam 2 which was another ip flex that's where we're headed towards okay without the internet like, there would be no memes. You love memes. You love emotes. There would be no emotes. There would be no memes, okay? And they could do that. Technically, they could do that. Do you want them to do that? That's fucking insane. That sucks. It ruins everything. It ruins art. Yes, as, as a chatter also pointed out, Perhaps most devastatingly, if copyright laws were enforced to its maximum degree, there would be no Overwatch porn. Do you want to live in a world where there's no Overwatch porn? I don't. No! <laughs> That's what the internet does. A lot. Hey, I used to do it. It's gone from the internet now for obvious reasons, but when I was younger, I unashamedly took images and other stuff from the web and repurposed it because I knew hardly anyone would see it, even fewer people would care, and the worst case scenario was that I'd get a cease and desist letter. And if that happened, I, I might be able to cry censorship and get some publicity out of it. I've grown up since then, but there are a whole new wave of kids who have that same... So you're essentially saying these movies are all production companies showing off their NFTs and saying you may not screenshot? Yes. And I've already fucking addressed that part of the equation as well. You wouldn't steal a car is a meme that we make fun of, but technically it's not a meme when there's enforcement. And if you have a lot of money and you have a lot of power and the centralized authorities, the centralized controls of power decide to side with you, then yes, you quite literally can't download a fucking car or, you know, use these sorts of movies and shit in your own, uh, in your own creative way. So yes, that kind of enforcement is completely up to who holds the power, how much influence they command over those who own uh, all the power, and how they decide to enforce it. That is what I'm trying to explain. Copyright is the same as enclosures, okay? It's just enclosures on intellectual property. That's all that it is, okay? There is, there is no, there's no difference between the argument. It's just completely made up. It's something that we decided uh, that we needed as a society, okay? That's it. People in positions of power decided, commons, not, not for everybody, okay? I'm putting a fucking goddamn fence around this plot of land, and I'm gonna put a flag on it, and it's mine now. That is what is known as enclosures. Now I'm gonna defend that land. It's my land. You can't sit on it. I'll fucking kill you, okay? The same exact thing happened with copyright as well. And the same exact thing that happened with patents and intellectual property as well. That is precisely what it is, okay? But people are, I think, closer to understanding why copyright is bullshit when enclosures have been just the way of the land for an incredibly long time that it's impossible to, to see a world or imagine a world without enclosures. Without land ownership, I mean. In philosophy. No copyright infringement intended. They'll say, I own nothing, all rights to the copyright owners, or this is transformative under fair use, as if just claiming that is some magic incantation that will ward off lawyers like waving a cross at vampires. I want to sue you now. No copyright infringement intended. No copyright infringement intended. <sighs> Andros Arato from Hungary posed for some stock photography a few years ago. He doesn't have rights over his face or image in any of these photos. He signed those away as part of the photography contract. And while there is a discussion to be had about personality rights and the ethics of taking some random person's face and using it without context, that's not relevant here. What is relevant is the copyright on that photo. 
If you're criticising or commenting on the photo itself, if you're judging the composition, the, the camera work, or yes, the incredibly awkward expression that meant he gained the nickname Hide the Pain Harold and became one of the most recognised figures in the nerdy underbelly of the internet, then yes, that may well be acceptable. But if you're just using those pictures as a stock image to make a point about anything else, then you'd better have a licence or you're exposing yourself to a lot of legal liability. When big publications talk about the distracted boyfriend picture, they license it. There is no exception under law for, oh, I just put it in my video as a quick joke. I licensed all those photos from a company called Shutterstock. Here's the license agreement. I, actually, I, I got a bundle deal of image credits from them because it was cheaper, uh, and I had some of those credits left over. So uh, please- Which fucking sucks, by the way. That's just awful, dude. Straight up. Straight up fucking awful, okay? Now enjoy a few inexplicable stock photos that I also now have the legal right to use. Anyway, the photographer who took that original distracted boyfriend picture was- For the record, here, let me, let me do a little bit of meta-analysis here, okay? One, technically, if Tom Scott wanted to punish me for watching this on stream, he could. He could issue a takedown and take me the fuck down, okay? He could sue me if he wanted to, I'm pretty sure. I'm certain that he wouldn't, because that would be rather ironic. Um, but, and he would be, that would be in his rights. Not only that, but technically Shutterstock could as well. For me, simply reacting, even if I was reacting to what Tom Scott is doing currently, in a way that actually uh, is within the boundaries of fair use, which you could make an argument that like, depending on how this is clipped out on YouTube later down the line, that this could tech, this could be a fair use uh, uh, usage, right? Okay. Then Shutterstock could still be like, well, it's not a fair use to have the fucking meme that he got a copyright for, but you didn't. And they could do that too, technically, you as well. Okay, they could do that to everyone if they wanted to. Like memes could be fucking copyrighted. It's all a matter of, it's, it's entirely just a matter of what they choose to do and what they choose not to pursue. Okay, that's it. Lol, react fire under content, uh, react content under fire, huh? And you scared? No, I am not even remotely in any way, shape or form scared. I don't know why you despise me so much. I don't. I truly don't understand. Because even in a situation where we're like personally fucking having a conversation about, um, you know, copyright content, like, and we're enjoying this and whatever, and we're like fucking learning from this shit, there's still homies in here who are like, haha, bitch, you're fucked in the ass now. Oh, they're coming. Are you scared? It's like, no, dude, why would I be? Why? And also, why are you the way you are? We thought Fox was letting MasterChef go on Twitch to promote their new shows, but they finally strike seeing backlash. And if the owner of Charlie Bit My Finger had the whole video taken now? Political guy plus soy vo voice plus hot? Stop banning people for nothing? Are you new here, motherfucker? Are you crazy? I ban people for way less than telling me who I can and can't ban. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, by the way, new bans... Your, mo mo ah, your most viewers aren't even here when you react to TV shows. People are so obvious they don't even watch the stream. I know. And that's the other beautiful part about this, which is that um, I, when I first switch over to MasterChef, I go usually from 45K to 40K, and then a separate set of viewers come trickling in, and it rises back up to 45K. So there is like a swing. There's a different audience for different kinds of content that I consume throughout the day. So... But they don't know that because they don't watch everything. And even if they watched everything, they probably wouldn't recognize the analytics in the same way that I do. Okay? There's people that, like, click away when I'm fucking watching uh, MasterChef. Because they're like, yeah, I don't give a fuck about that. News people that come to me come for the bulk of my content, which is news and commentary and entertainment. And those people are very specific. And in a lot of instances, they just fucking leave.
And the way here, I'll be brutally honest. The way I utilize some of the reaction content that I watch, probably a bad idea to be brutally honest. But the way I utilize reaction content is because some of your wives want to watch MasterChef. Some of your friends want to watch MasterChef with me. They like that. That's a good entry point into the stream. And then they become fans of the Hasanabi broadcast in general. Okay. We hear that all the time in here. Like, oh, I, I'm, I'm, my girlfriend is uh, watching with me because, like, it's fucking dope. What did he say? Enjoy the car? <sighs> He's such a piece of shit, dude. He's trying very desperately to fucking draw ire from people even though he's you know he's memeing okay not wrong my girlfriend loved 90 uh, day fiance and here we are exactly that's why i do a a just major uh I, I, that's why i do variety content because i see that like Variety content is very good at reaching out to different audiences that I usually wouldn't be able to. Okay? <sighs> you should watch King of the Nerds, the reality Oi Bro show where the nerf battle out and nerd call each other. I literally started following you because your Jubilee reacts and here I am now. Exactly. It's just wide, is a wide array of content. Okay? Some people like that. And then they're like, you know what? I want to see more of this. I want to see more of this, uh, this content. Anyway. Regardless. Ultimately, don't worry about me. Worry about yourself. Like the top of the hour, 60 second ad break that's coming right now. Because at the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break. And if you want an uninterrupted broadcasting experience, if you want all of it, no interruptions. Then all you need to do is subscribe. You can do that for $5. You can do that for free with a Twitch Prime. You can do that by getting gifted a sub if you're lucky. Okay? But a 60-second ad break comes for you regardless. Why don't you use gaming content to reach a new audience? Because gaming is not a type of content but that brings in a new audience. If that was the case, then all these old gamers wouldn't be fucking complaining about React content on their uh, gaming platform nonstop, okay? Homies with, like, exclusive gaming audiences are uh, not uh, able to uh, cultivate an audience. There's like one person who can fucking game and, and maintain their audience, and that person's XQC, okay? So sorry. I do love gaming. I enjoy it. I enjoy doing it on my own. And I do it to, even when I, you know, punish my own self. That's how much I love it, but that's the reality. Anyway. Was asked how he felt about his work being used everywhere without permission. And he said, they're just a group of people doing it in good faith. We are not going to take any action except for the extreme cases in which this good faith doesn't exist. That is an act of generosity on his part. He would be entirely within his rights to hire a service like Pixie, let them play the bad guys and rake in a lot of money. And if you think that's wrong. For the record, back in 2019, XQ would lose half his viewer count when he went into gaming. Yeah, that happened to everyone. And then slowly but surely, he cultivated an audience that comes to him because they love the way he games. He probably changed the way he games as well. Uh, and I'm working on that as well. Everyone does. And fucking, uh, so does Misgift for the record. Like every single content creator that does variety recognizes that reality. But don't worry, fear not. Uh, uh, I am working on it. I'm talking to Grimes about potentially playing a puzzle game, whether it be uh, It Takes Two or uh, uh, playing um, the, the House of Ashes or whatever, the, the scary game. So I have a couple different games lined up and also I will be playing more games in general. So just do not fucking worry, okay? Then talk to a professional photographer. Ask them how they earn their living and how much their equipment costs and how they'd feel about it. Now, as I record this, Pixie doesn't appear to have automated systems hunting through YouTube videos to find unlicensed images and send out legal threats, but they could pretty easily. Maybe those claims could be defended in court with enough money, but in the current system, most people would be forced to fold and pay a license fee and give up. 
and viral video licensing companies like Duke and Media do already search through YouTube for unlicensed use of the video clips they own. And while as a company they are vilified by the creator community, they've, um, they've got a point. Creators have the right to determine how their work is being used, and taking someone else's copyrighted photos or videos and using them commercially without- Except Juke and Media and all these other fucking companies aren't actually working at the behest of the content creators themselves. If anything, they're a middleman that personally stand to benefit the most from over-enforcing copyright, okay? And that's precisely how they make their money, and that's precisely why they over-enforce copyright, because every time they fucking hit someone, and monetize to take a percentage off that monetization so they are literally just like they're bounty hunters okay they're scumbags and in most instances they are not uh on the side of the content creator both the one that is receiving the copyright or the one that has the copyright being protected without permission without criticism is not fair use under the law even if loads of other people have already used them even if you had some words on top of them even if you mash them up with three other things, are you 100% sure that you are transforming or criticizing the original, not just using it? I know you're 100% sure that a court would agree with you. And just to repeat, I'm not saying this is how it should be, I'm saying this is how it is. But that's pictures and videos. What about bits of pop culture? At the end of 2019, Giphy, a GIF aggregation site, briefly removed the... Actually, hold on, people will complain. I'm pronouncing it GIF because Giphy, the site I'm talking about, pronounces it GIF. And besides, the real problem is that they're not actually GIFs, they're short video files and other formats. GIF is a really specific descriptor for a data format. Short looping videos are not GIFs, but apparently now they are. It's like how emoji now refers to any small image. I'm still grumpy about all of this, don't at me. Anyway, at the end of 2019... You know motherfuckers are still mad, probably, in the comments. Disney lobby copyright law into absurdity. 70 years after the creator's death is bloody absurd. True. Giphy briefly removed its many, many gifts of the child from The Mandalorian, a creature designed to be so adorable that I can only assume the design came directly from Disney's merchandising team. Those gifts were removed because of what Giphy described as confusion about certain content. I guess they got a legal letter from someone at Disney before Disney realized- That's how fucking psychotic they are, by the way. Disney is the number one villain in the story. I'm surprised it took 15 minutes for- our friend here, Tom Scott, that finally get to Disney a little bit. Oh my lord, if there's anything that all of these fucking suckers on the internet are actually, uh, you know, arguing today for free for the corporate overlords that they are supposedly defending, despite getting zero fucking dollars and zero cents for such defenses, Disney is the number one reason for why such laws even fucking exist in the first place. They are awful, they are evil, it is kind of funny that they uh, that people think it's like this wonderful brand uh, that is uh, about uh, you know keeping children happy or whatever the fuck. A disaster it would be to stop the internet having immediate access to Baby Yoda, but the Guardian article about that brief takedown has a really interesting final line: "Images in GIFs are widely understood to fall under the fair use exception." Notice how that's phrased widely understood there has never been a court case about this are gifts fair use i actually think that if some company got a bee in their bonnet the same way they did about napster 20 years ago and if they insisted on litigating all the way to court it is entirely possible that a judge would go no gifts aren't a parody they're not criticism they're not transformative they're not fair use giffy's entire product the giff economy is based on systematic copyright infringement pay the money shut it down in practice, of course, it wouldn't get that far. Giphy would accept a cease and desist and take down what was complained about. It's just easier because, remember, they're not an individual creator or a small site. Giphy has an enormous office in New York with catered lunches and arcade games for more than 100 employees based on a business model that is arguably copyright infringement. I am amazed that no big media corporations have looked at their money and gone, we can sue them for that. In the same way, Uploading video game footage to YouTube is widely understood to be okay, but that's questionable. Yup. Whenever I fucking say this, whenever I say this, isn't this just stealing Tom's video? Yes, yes, it is. This is theft, okay? I am stealing Tom Scott's video right now. The main, but you are missing the fucking point. You are literally missing the fucking point. Tom's entire video is currently describing why this kind of theft is arbitrary and also on top of that would render it impossible to fucking make content 
if it was informed to the maximum degree, why are you so stupid? We are currently watching a video about why that's fucking stupid to do. I'm losing my mind. Okay? Now I am starting to get fucking stun locked. Holy shit. Okay. Whew. What Tom is about to mention is precisely what I have said a million times over. All video games and all video game streamers that play on this gaming website are technically infringing on copyright, okay? If all of these video game companies tomorrow decided to enforce their copyright, there would be no gaming on this platform. Ironically, the only thing on this platform would be people like myself, who instead of fucking reacting to YouTube videos, would just sit there and talk like this the entire fucking stream, okay? Because technically, the only people who are not infringing on copyright, but even then, actually, I have the Zelda logo behind me. I didn't pay to fucking have the Zelda logo behind me. I didn't pay to have the fucking master, uh, the, 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 the Hylian shield or whatever behind me either. I didn't pay for the likeness of that. I did not. So technically, even then, that's copyright infringement. Every part of our lives would could be technically monetizable, okay? But that would be psychotic. I'm wearing a t-shirt that has Prince's likeness on it, okay? Did I pay to, to have Prince's likeness on it, on this t-shirt? I have Spalding behind me. The logo of Spalding. I didn't pay for that. That would be completely psychotic if that was enforced. I didn't pay for Richard Dare to sponsor the stream. No, I paid for the shirt. I paid for the shirt. I didn't pay for the shirt to, or this likeness of the shirt to be appearing on the stream though. And technically, I have to. Okay? And that is precisely what I'm trying to communicate to you here. Is that more restrictions on things like this, okay, will lead you down this weird fucking, uh, you know, this weird trajectory, okay? Physicality is the force of separation and copyright law that has somehow survived in the more modern uh, century. And by the way, that is where we're going to go. That is where we're going to fucking go. We're, we are heading down that direction for the record. I want everyone to understand. We are heading down that direction. So when you advocate for dumb shit like this. What? Hey, Hassan, I fucking hate billionaires, but why normalize this kind of content creation? I don't want you, but aren't you celebrating, say, Fox News? Fox Network's billionaire network? Wait, what? Yeah, just, I, I don't even understand what you're trying to say here. Maybe if it's something like Minecraft, where there's a lot of original work, it could be. And besides, the, the license agreement that you accept when playing Minecraft allows streaming and most YouTube videos. But if it's just a video of cutscenes or following roughly the same sequence of events that every player would follow, well, it's a bit like putting up a video of you watching a TV show. We've seen companies decide in the past that actually they don't want videos of their games online. It is very easy to make the argument that online streaming of games affects sales. And the impact on- Sounds like an issue is that the stream is monetized. If it wasn't monetized, it would be fine. No, that is fucking stupid. You are stupid and you are wrong. Even if the stream was not monetized, you would not be able to get away with it. If the copyright holder decided to fucking punish you for it, why do- He literally described this in the beginning, dude. Oh, okay, dude. If it's not monetized, then turn off monetization and just stream the entirety of the fucking Lord of Rings franchise on there. Okay? Shut up. Shut up. You're stupid. I'm sorry. You're fucking stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. That's why when you watch movies or sh shit, sometimes they literally just have like a blank t-shirt. Or that's why they don't... On TV shows and shit like that. That's why they like hide whatever the brand is that you're drinking. 
Okay. That was not fucking copyrighted, that burp. On sales is a key component in determining whether something is fair use. Sure, the games get some exposure, but exposure doesn't pay the rent. I didn't buy Untitled Goose Game and experience the beautiful artwork and immaculately timed comic set pieces myself. I skipped through a couple of videos so I could get the jokes and then I moved on. I didn't buy Super Liminal either. I just watched a video of someone playing it to get how it works, skipped forward to see how it ends, and then I got on with my life. And I'm. I'm and notice how he's personally fucking adding criticism and review right there. So this is the second part that I need to mention here. Notice how he's saying criticism and review when he's briefly talking about these video games. Because technically this entire video is supposed to be like not subject to copyright laws, right? So the amount of work that he has to put in, if he was actually able to like use brief fucking uh, parts, bits, pieces from video games, if he actually was to use that, what he would have to do is reach out to the fucking Goose Game Untitled uh, uh, video game uh, company, the company that made it, and basically say, hey, can I use a bit and piece for this? That process takes a fuckload of time. That literally, like, that that actually gets in the way of, of making quick, uh, rapid-fire, funny memes and content like that. And even then, they could say no, for example. And some TV shows go through this process. They have an entire team of people to go through this process. Okay? I'm glad I did. The game mechanics are clever. Like, what I would have to do is reach out to Tom Scott, reach out to every single fucking content uh, that Tom Scott has used personally, reach out to, like, a thousand different people and be like, hey, can I technically use this in my stream as I'm restreaming Tom Scott's stream, even though Tom Scott said, yes, you can restream this. It doesn't really matter. I would have to go through the steps of like literally going to the untitled goose game guy and being like, Hey, can we do that? Hey, I'd have to go to pillow castle, super liminal and be like, can we actually watch a three second clip? And that is psychotic. That is not something that you would ever be able to do. And that's not something that you would want as a content consumer. Okay. That's the problem. And that's the point. Okay. But the ending is unsatisfying. Or maybe I just think that because I watch someone else play it. And that someone else who provided a substitute for the original product made money off that, either from advertising or streaming donations. Now, video game streaming might be fair use if you've got someone constantly criticizing and reviewing the work as they play it. Not just talking about it or uh, not just, you know, repeating what they're saying in the game or saying hi to the chat, like actively criticizing, maybe. It would be up to a judge to decide. No one wants any case like that to get to court because somehow we have an entire industry based around something that is very possibly copyright infringement, but which most video game publishers are just going along with. Perhaps because they genuinely think it's a good thing or perhaps- And it is. It is a good thing. It is genuinely a good thing. And because, as he's about to say, Nintendo tried this and got literally clapped up by every single motherfucker on the planet for doing this early on, okay? <laughs> because they've seen the backlash that happens when horrible gamer children are suddenly denied something they think is their right. I don't know. I, I, it does seem like Tom is not like really on the side of, uh, maybe not full-blown abolition of copyright, but like definitely, you know, uh, releasing the restrictions. The more I hear it, like the more I friend feel that corner. way. Hey, hey, this is transformative. This is definitely fair use. Would you do this to a Marvel movie, though? No, oh, mate, they'd sue me for every penny I've got. In the not exactly. In 1988, KTMA TV in Minneapolis aired the first episode of Mystery Science Theater. Oh, this is a huge Fest. one. That's me. I know, I know. It is me, literally. Which was basically a reaction channel. A host, along with a cast of puppet robots, would watch a full-length movie, usually an old science fiction piece. They'd be in silhouette as if they were in the row of cinema seats in front of you, constantly cracking jokes about whatever was on screen. It's tightly written, scripted with joke after joke after joke, although the skits that surround the movie are often so laden with in-jokes and character shtick that new viewers who don't know the show and the cast can be completely lost. Like I said, it's basically a reaction channel. Time Magazine listed Mystery Science Theater as one of the 100 greatest TV shows of all time. A Kickstarter brought it back in 2016, and then Netflix brought it back for another couple of seasons. Mystery Science Theater was absolutely criticism and review, and absolutely transformative, 
but they still licensed the movies. Anything that wasn't in the public domain, they negotiated and paid for because, yeah, playing out someone else's entire movie just with wisecracks over it, probably not fair use. And even if it was a studio. Some of the idea people should get paid when they use other people's content without their permission. Dude, hold on, here. You use someone else's content without their permission. You use someone else's content without their permission. You use someone else's content without their permission. Um, again, you have already used someone else's content without their permission. That's actually completely unacceptable. That is really, really fucked up. That's unacceptable. That's really fucked up. Uh, why would you? Thank God I'd ban Burkas. Well, well, you're getting banned now. It's not the same. It is exactly the same. You do not want to live in a world where copyright is enforced in the way that it is supposed to be. So shut the fuck up. Why? Why? Why do you advocate for it? For the record, making money is not the only way that a copyright could be enforced. I already mentioned this in the beginning. It doesn't matter if he's getting paid for it or not. It does not matter. Copyright is enforceable regardless of whether you are making money off of it or not. Okay? If that wasn't the case, then you could just literally put fucking full-blown videos on YouTube, dog. And be like, I'm not making money out of it. Yeah, font is copyright. I should probably stop reading chat. Don't pay attention to the lib moralists that can't find happiness in the hellscape they support. It's so weird. I would have probably sued them at some point anyway, and they'd have had to defend the case and spend the money to defend the case. Now, there have been YouTube commentary channels who have defended lawsuits where fair use and fair dealing seem clear. H3H3, an often controversial reaction and commentary channel, won a very expensive lawsuit that was brought by someone they criticised. They were very happy about the result, and they shared that with their fans in a way that pretty much sums up why their style isn't for everyone. Good job, Eva. Good job. <laughs> the court even noted that the video was transformative because it responds to and transforms the video from a skit into fodder for caustic, moment-by-moment -moment commentary and mockery. The judge's decision goes into the balancing factors of fair use in depth, but the most important bit is a little bit further down. Some reaction videos intersperse short segments of another's work with criticism and commentary, while others are more akin to a group viewing session without commentary. Accordingly, the court is not ruling here that all reaction videos constitute fair use. It's clear that just playing a video and laughing at it isn't fair use. It's copyright infringement. The border of fair use is somewhere in the grey area between lazy zero-effort reaction streamers and in-depth insightful criticism. But it's a fuzzy border. And right now, questions about it can only be settled on a case-by-case -case basis. Capital is only worried about profiting off the work of others? No, dude. No, I don't care. I don't care. Please understand, folks, what got me to this point is because I am not fucking static, okay? I can move with the punches. I can move, I can duck, I can dive, I can change. The reality is that if all of this shit was actually enforced to the maximum degree, you would not get the same kind of content that you appreciate and enjoy. It hurts you, okay? It hurts you. I'm fluid as a motherfucker. I'm like water, dude. I'm Bruce Lee. I'll still make content. I don't know, man. Ever since I've watched you, you've always been done. You've always done the same thing. Get stunlocked and memed on by LSF. 
and then you know ban someone who has a silly take like this yeah ever since you started watching me and it's you know i guess some people like that you know in an expensive courtroom because yeah there is one thread throughout all these examples under the current system it often doesn't matter who's actually in the right even can you dodge a wrench then you can dodge a ball boom copyrighted that's currently copyrighted script that's a joke that you stole from the famous work dodgeball you are currently you must remove your comment immediately lest you pace unless you face legal persecution because you are currently stealing someone else's written intellectual property. My lawyers, well, not my lawyers, the lawyers of the Dodgeball Andy uh, uh, movie will, you know, be in contact. Even if the answer to is it fair use is clear, it's actually about whether you can afford to defend a case. You could be 100% sure it's fair use, but unless you're prepared to spend the time and the money to actually fight that in court, it doesn't matter. Which brings us to how YouTube worked around this. Back in 2006, YouTube made an arrangement with the big music companies. So the big industry players wouldn't sue this new platform out of existence. YouTube developed Content ID, which scans every video uploaded and checks it against an enormous database of copyrighted content. If there's a match, Everything works completely outside the usual copyright system. All those worries about synchronization licenses and publication rights, all that law is effectively replaced with two contracts. One that's private between YouTube and the big media companies, and one that's in the terms of service that you agree to when you upload your bedroom vlogger video to YouTube. There is a public list of the music tracks that are in Content ID, including the current policies from the music companies. There's no list of the TV shows or films or other stuff that's in there. Mostly, the copyright owners just put adverts on the video. Sometimes they do block it entirely, but those policies can change at any time. And if you do something they particularly don't like, it doesn't make you immune from lawsuits or from formal takedown notices under a law called the DMCA. The way you're implying copyright works with quotes and stuff is just isn't how it works at all. We get you're mad. You can't be lazy and react, but knowing you'll just keep reacting anyways like you are right now to a video saying your content isn't fair use, Lamal. Yes. Me actually currently personally reacting to Tom Scott's video is literally quite literally a perfect example of why people are not over the top with copyright. That is quite literally what is happening right now. Okay. I hope you understand that in a, we're currently watching a video about how ridiculous copyright can be if implemented to its maximum degree. I'm also additionally adding stuff on top of that to the video itself. Okay. And technically, that is a violation of copyright, as I've mentioned numerous times over and over again. But very likely, Tom Scott is not going to persecute me for this. And therefore, it does not matter. Do you understand? No, you don't. You don't understand anything because you're a fucking baboon. That's why you don't. You're just angry. You're an angry fucking ape. And you're in my chat trying to get a rise out of me, successfully so, before you go back into nothingness and have an entire month where you can't even turn around and fucking ask for forgiveness to be unbanned. Now you will not be able to type in this chat ever again, most likely. Uh, they're called copyright strikes by YouTube. Those are still an option for copyright owners. It's just that with very, very few exceptions, they'll take the money from ads instead. Content ID means that video creators, unless they're being so malicious as to attract serious attention, generally don't get sued and don't get DMCA takedowns. They don't have to negotiate a synchronization license for cover songs. Now, some companies, music labels mostly, are also able to manually put Content ID claims on videos that the automated systems miss. That is an avenue for abuse. And so is the manual appeals process that's meant to kick in if the automated systems have flagged something that really is fair use, like a review or a brief incidental snippet of a song that was playing somewhere as you walked by. Often, the appeals... By the way, that literally was going on, for the record. That was happening with music, because the music industry is dog shit, okay? They're fucking dog shit. And remember, Jake and Bake Live, straight the fuck up, was getting clapped. And there were, even then, dude, 
there were still people now that I remember there were still people being like well yeah in a normal fucking setting in a normal studio setting if you're trying to do a live stream you're not supposed to have any fucking music uh playing in the background and it's like dude you're literally we're not talking about what the legal boundaries are okay we're talking about the morality of it and more importantly we are talking about whether it's fun or not okay whether it's content or not you are cucking your own content by abiding by very very weird restrictions that mega corporations has placed upon us it is so strange dude it is such an incredibly fucking strange thing to behave this way this process does work but give a corporation an inch and they'll take a mile. Making decisions about fair use and copyright is meant to be handed over to experienced, trained people who can give nuanced judgments. But from the stories that have come out over the years, it looks like it's mostly subcontracted out to the lowest bidder, with enormous decision-making power given to people whose job is just to run through the backlog of appeals as quickly as possible and make snap decisions, knowing that very few people will actually be able to do anything. To those that say he's being hyperbolic, this is straight from an IP lawyer. If you draw a picture of a copyrighted character for yourself at home for no money that you never show anyone, that is illegal and you can be sued. Obviously, no one would do that, though. That would be fucking psychotic. And it's the same, the same goes for gifts, right? Disney tried to do that, as Tom described in the beginning of the fucking process, with Giphy, okay? And then they realized, well, that's insane to do. But they can do it. So obviously, just because something is the law doesn't fucking mean that it's appropriate. Actually, I don't know how uh, you can... I'm pretty sure you can, like, re technically recreate the fucking art yourself. I don't think you can just, like, you know, put it on a t-shirt or some shit. Disney sued a daycare center for painting its characters on the wall. Nobody cares about the morality of copyright law. What the fuck? Nobody wants copyright to be enforced. The whole gripe is not wanting streamers to draw attention of more companies to be aggressive in pursuing DMCA strikes. Really? That's the... the so the best way to do that is by fucking snarkily claiming, oh man, it's going to get really bad over and over again. Or basically say... Basically typing out fucking entire essays on LSF with like completely psychotic fucking fervor about how you, you were operating basically for zero dollars and zero cents as a fucking copyright lawyer for a mega corporation. That's the best way to fucking uh, ensure that we don't draw the ire of corporations, you dumb bitch. Shut the fuck up. You have no honest or moral point of view here. You are not the company. You are not working for the company. You're just fucking angry, okay? And that's fine. It's okay to be angry. In most circumstances, however, you angrily fucking lash out at shit without comprehending that it's actually going to hurt you in the long run, okay? It's going to cuck your own content that you like to do, that you like to enjoy. You are drawing more attention to it by literally being like, this is going to draw more attention to it. That's so stupid. People were adding the networks. There's a very high likelihood that, like, look, XQC watched every fucking, yeah, and then, or just take the L over and over again. That's the other. My, that's my other favorite thing. Just take the L, bro. Yeah, dude. How about this L, though? How about this fucking L, idiot? There you go. Hassan is banning all kinds of fucking incredibly important uh, criticisms that are made in good faith on a stream. Yeah, well, guess what? Sucks, sucks to suck. XQC was able to watch MasterChef to hundreds of thousands of fucking people literally for months. Why are people getting takedowns now, you think? Huh? Why? He was able to watch it for months. Why are people getting takedowns now? Why did that happen? I thought when you watched it, it was it was actually also uh, platforming it, and it was also snitching on yourself. How did that happen? How? Motherfucker watched literally season one through like eight. It's not because of just LUD. It's because everyone got up and whipped up a fucking frenzy, which then actually got the attention of the corporate overlords. Okay? That's how this works.
okay? Result. I've been a victim of that in the past. A TV channel from Thailand. And for the record, like, XQC tweeting at Gordo, for example. XQC tweeting at Gordo is not negative attention. XQC, as a matter of fact, partnering up with Gordo is positive attention. It almost shows that, like, it doesn't even fucking matter. Like, they don't care that people are watching this shit, okay? And ultimately, it doesn't matter. Ludwig's not getting the last laugh because he can't even watch other fucking YouTube content for the most part. Took one of my videos, played it out without permission in one of their big television shows, and then put that entire television show into Content ID. I got a Content ID hit on my original video from them, and that took a long time to sort out. And I never found out, in the end, whether that channel kept their access to Content ID or not, because yes, companies that abuse it should have it taken away from them. But of course, if YouTube does that, then they fall back to the legal default position. DMCA takedowns or lawsuits, either against the creators or against YouTube itself. There are absolutely flaws in Content ID. I am not saying it's perfect. There are hundreds of cases that we could talk about where the system didn't work and thousands more that never got enough publicity for the world to actually notice them. There are so many edge cases, like the people who got copyright claims on white noise just on the sound of static because the system wasn't originally built to deal with white noise. Or the people who do in-depth music theory analysis of songs, very likely fair use, but still getting manual Content ID claims. But I don't think con Um... Wait, what is this? Miskip just tweeted, uh, RP Cop just got DMCA my server for Sirens. Apparently there's an album that the system caught. Yeah, that happens all the time. Who's everyone? Pokey watched a whole ass movie. Stop simping. This is another, uh, this is another one of the fucking weirdos where it's like, it's like he doesn't care about the actual issue at hand. He doesn't care about the potentials of the content. This person is doing, uh, what is known as drama farming, where he thinks like he's a whole ass puppet master that's like, bringing content creators against one another by saying shit like this. So I respond to it so we can clip it and then post it on LSF. How do we deal with these guys in 2022? Like, there it is. Content ID is broken. Just an incel. It's a reasonable stopgap. It works almost all the time. That video of a couple's first dance at a wedding uploaded by the father of the bride. Does this mean you won't be able to react to news videos anymore? No, dude, it's, that's, it's, it's. All it depends. Okay. All that depends. It's all a matter of like what people will pursue or not. Okay. That's it. It's all entirely dependent on what people will pursue. Just like I said, if Tom Scott decided to pursue me, he could, he could take this down. Okay. Most of the news, however, I am very fortunate is fair use. News commentary is usually very, I mean, it's like super fair use. No, copyright law doesn't allow him to upload that to YouTube, not unless he's got a synchronization license. But Content ID just deals with it and the video stays up. That excited fan video from the kid in the front row at a concert, no. Not permitted under copyright law. Content ID deals with it. Uh, the teenager making a video, compiling all the romantic subtext between their two favorite characters in a show. No, not allowed. It's not criticism or review, but Content ID deals with it and the video stays up. Without Content ID, the, the real reason why Pokey and not Miz got uh, clapped is because Miz probably, Pokey is a bigger content creator, more known entity, has a lot of haters. Misgift doesn't have as many haters as Pokey does. They probably fucking uh, manually took hers down. That's why she got clapped. Miskiff probably most likely got a DMCA takedown notice after the fact. But if you get a DMCA takedown notice while you're not streaming, then you don't get banned. You just get a DMCA takedown notice and your VODs can no longer be accessed. So Miz very cleverly and very smartly fucking uh, ended his stream quickly, deleted the VOD, uh, making it so that he actually didn't uh, get clapped. Miski watched Home Alone. I mean, he does shit like that all the time. Everyone does. Everyone does. He, but 
it's all a matter of how many people who fucking how many people just uh, have fucking haters who despise them okay that's the point if you don't have a lot of fucking people who despise you who want to fucking you know end your shit no matter what then that's it you fell off little bro yeah totally bro you fucking got me homie you fucking got me good. those videos would be taken down by dmca copyright strikes and if someone protested pokey didn't even have vods enabled for the stream that was most likely manual right lud don't you think it was it was likely manual right right it has to be because when we all got fucking taken down when we all got dmca'd okay ban him no, i'm not gonna fucking ban him dude when we all got dmca'd for the the presidential debates which is a whole different can of worms i think it's fucking disgusting that it's copyrighted um well good luck Assam, because from your chat alone you definitely seem to have haters i know it's pretty funny though wait hold on you bastard how dare you call me on this Bro, line and not on fucking discord Call you on Discord, bro. You're call, dumb as fuck. Call, call me on, out here. I'm call, hate watching. I figured out what hate watching. Oh, is. okay. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's hear your dumb takes. He just wants you to watch the video for engagement. Oh, I know. Snitch wig, dude. L wig. What an L nerd. What a fucking L nerd this guy is. Dude, you're so dumb. Oh my god, dude. I will ban you. I'll banish you from the chat right now. You son of a bitch. Look, you've made good points, but then you you keep talking. Okay, okay, all right, what's up? What, what were you going to say? Okay, look, okay, you make a good point. We all want to live in a world without copyright. That is true. Mm -hmm. I agree with you, because otherwise you made the point several times, all right, belabored on it. You could no longer react or play games, or even emotes would get removed. Mm -hmm. Pokey uses Pikachu. The largest media franchise to sell. He's doing it again. He's doing it again. Chat, chat. He's snitching again. Look at him. This is not. Oh, he's literally my snitching. God. He's just. Oh my god. Oh, so oh my god. You never even watched it. my video. That's <laughs> the worst part is you never watched my video. You pulled it up and you called it snitching, and the whole content of the video was man. probably agreeing with what I've said thus far on most. You agree things. with everything. Yeah, even even in like methods of stealing content or like avoiding copyright. I was being like, hey, this is how we could avoid copyright. The content ID system is basically a framework to avoid copyright on Twitch. And then I said, the only reason I don't react, two reasons. One, I can't on YouTube. Two, I'm also bad at it. I feel uncomfortable. I don't know. Do you ever get that reacting? No. I've been, because I've been it. doing it for years and years and years and years. Also, the reason why I didn't watch your fucking bitch ass, snitch ass, virtue signaling, concern trolling video is because I don't want to get fucking struck down by you, okay? That's right. I said it. I don't feel safe anymore. Yeah. I don't feel yeah, safe. I, I feel like you're going to you're going to take me down. You're going to do a DMCA notice. Dude, you I, I would. I would take you down. And I will eventually <laughs> take you down. You have my extension on your browser. I see it. I'm going to take you down. Yeah, no. I The other day I was confused as to why your face kept popping up whenever you're live and I was like, "What the fuck? Is he live on Twitch?" And then I kept clicking on it, and it, it would just go to your, go to your fucking offline page, not I realizing that it's the extension that you downloaded on my fucking on my browser. It's a good extension. Check it out, Mogul TV. Wow, look at him! I look used, at him! You, you didn't I pay used for this. To react to stuff. I used to do Sunday morning cartoons. I did it for like a month, and I hated it because I, um, I I was bad at react. I'm a bad reactor. I love reacting. Which, I think which was I, in the video. I talked about it in the video. Okay. So what are what are the disagreements that we have then, you and I? The main disagreements are that people will set the line of what they think is okay arbitrarily. And and like Tom Scott often says, the line is right under what they're currently doing. So you're like watching Avatar is stupid because Viacom owns it. But then you turn on MasterChef and then someone oh, no, else will be no, like, no, no, no. I understand. Dumb, but turn on YouTube. I understand. Which uh again, and this is something I readily admit as well, it is that also, yeah, Tom Scott literally refused to be on Ludwig's game show because it's a Jeopardy clone. He knows no one is safe under the copyright law. <laughs> That's exactly right. No, I know, I know. So, so if copyright law is bad and we don't want it to be enforced, why are you testing the limits of companies by playing uh, with more and more powerful groups with streamers watching Home Alone, Lord of the Rings, 
Yeah, why, no, why I, that's why it? I think playing music, we, we all understand. It's, I, am a, I am a React Andy. I've been doing React streams for a very long time. I've been doing it when I had 1,000 people in here. I've been doing, I did it when I had 5,000. And I've been doing it to 40,000 viewers as well. So what usually uh, I like to look at is whether or not there are mass takedowns of the original content on YouTube because YouTube already has copy because uh, YouTube already has content ID, right? So oftentimes if a video is not fully taken down in many different places on YouTube and it's been there for months and months, that means in my worldview, in my point of view, and I might be wrong on this, but that usually means that the content uh, owner, the copyright owner is not as strict at enforcing copyright and largely doesn't care unless someone pokes the fucking bear. Whereas Avatar The Last Airbender is not like that. Um, or, or whole movies are not like that. It's still technically infringement, just like every other aspect is, just like, you know, having a Jeopardy clone is infringement. So I don't personally think that MasterChef for one reason or the other, and I don't know why, up until this very moment was very litigious about pursuing copyright. Does Sounds that make like you're sense? Being kind of a snitch. Like you're saying what they're doing is wrong right now because like they didn't do the due diligence. Yeah, of course, but I, but I don't think it's wrong. I think it's a good thing because I think also the separate side of this is that um, it, it probably brings a lot of uh, new eyeballs to the newer seasons. So I... I do personally think oh, that it's, it's I think better. I that's revisionist just based off of an excuse to do it. I don't think you enter. Oh, no, 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 like, no, 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 no. I'm, I, I, I'm just saying that there aren't negatives. Seasons. There aren't foreseeable negatives. And then there are only positives on top of that, especially if you abide by certain arbitrary uh, or rules. Like I, 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 watching... would, I would love to see you in a boardroom with the executives at Fox. I don't think you win that argument. But I think the, well, real the argument doesn't matter really... because they ultimately win because they are the copyright owners, right? But what I... I'm simply stating is I look at it like video games. You and I both understand that video games are enforceable copyright, technically. Yeah. So video game creators in that industry recognize the importance of uh, live streamers playing their video games, regardless of whether or not those video games are single player games or multiplayer games, right? Based off precedent, people feel comfortable playing games. Yes. I think pushing the envelope in streamers' willingness to do it is just because, and this is a direct quote from you, by the way, I can move, I can duck, I can dive, I can change. Yeah. You know that if you got banned for something, you could easily bounce back, probably grow larger like you did from your last ban. So it mm -hmm. doesn't matter for you. You're still going to be a huge top No, but the creator. ban sucks, especially if it's a seven-day ban. But what I was saying is like, I can duck, I can dodge, as in like, if they made it harder for me to create content in the sense that like they were truly, truly utilizing copyright to its maximum uh, intentional uh, uh, reasons why they created the copyright to begin with, I would still be able to stream. It would just suck. It would be less yeah. good. Because you're already a top creator and you can easily bounce back and adapt. It won't hurt you. You'll be fine. The public attention from the band will probably help you in the long run. This and is, then you'll by be the able way, to this is the second part of the... Uh, the second trolling. part is that the road you're going down is going to make the entire landscape of Twitch be like YouTube, which let me tell you, fucking blows. The content ID, you don't want it. You don't want that smoke, especially because YouTube has a no, way I agree. to pay I think it's fucking terrible, but holders. it's going to happen regardless. But if you understand that, if you understand that, then don't you think drawing negative attention to it is actually worse overall, specifically... Uh, especially if you consider the fact that Trainwrecks was able to watch all the MasterChef seasons without any fucking scrutiny. Well, scrutiny, yes, but not like the same peak level of fucking uh, negative attention associated with it. XQC was able to watch literally straight the fuck up, uh, what, 10 seasons in a row? And then now all of a sudden MasterChef is a big problem after all of these, uh, you know, after everybody got whipped up into a frenzy. Well, the problem is because everyone's getting so comfortable, more creators are getting involved. Like Myth started Yu-Gi-Oh, Toast started like several animes, Pokey started. He's doing Avatar. it again. He's doing it again. Uh, He's outing you think everybody. Your stream is the hub for Viacom executives. You think they watch you really? Yes. When Ebay is live, they have things to do. I don't know, man. The thing I... is, I, people are pushing it because they see so many other people doing it. Look, if you go to the fucking Russian category right now on just chatting, 
most of them are watching content, but it doesn't fucking matter because nobody is going to find them down there. Yes. If 20% of the top creators are watching just egregious copywritten content and then more and more are getting involved because one, it gets views and it's the meta. And then two, what are they going to compete with? Fucking games? No shot. Do you, and it's only going to get worse and people are going to push it farther. Do you I think, think you're going to fuck do you, yourself in the do, do you think that there is... Um... Do you think that my uh, set of expectations of the boundaries that I set, specifically like watching YouTubers, for example, obviously that's not going to fucking cause a lot of ire uh, with the with the exception of like the one or two YouTubers who are like, I don't like you. I don't want you to watch my content, which is fine. I apologize. Never again. Right. Uh, but watching certain things, uh, albeit still a violation of copyright, is uh, is is something that everybody does and it's reasonable and it's understandable. Right. You're you mm -hmm. and I are in agreement there. Right. Yeah. So I, look, I, I guess the disagreement. Do you, copyright. do you think that? Do you think that um, the the area that we disagree with is that MasterChef also passes that boundary that crosses that boundary of like uh, pushing the line? I don't think I am willing to make any argument. I think I put the line right under what I do, and I think you do the same. Yeah, and I that's, think for yeah. that we are both bad people. Yeah, but no, I for sure. I, I I think that like I'm careful. I don't play any music whatsoever. I've never played music whatsoever, unless it's like literally someone I personally know who has released the 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 fucking you know legal scrutiny personally on stream, like JPEG Mafia did. Um, but uh, in in most cases, like I'm I'm very careful. I have been taken down for a DMCA in the past because I think it's like completely bullshit. But I was watching the presidential. Um, I was watching the the presidential debates. And everybody that yeah. was watching it got fucking clapped. I think that's bullshit. That's separate. Okay. But ultimately, I don't think I crossed that boundary. It, or I guess the boundary is changing. It always is changing. It's arbitrary. Because technically, the real legal boundary is enforceable, but insane. It's impossible to fucking uh, stream around. Yeah, I think you do a good job. I think your willingness to keep the VODs up is a bad thing in general. Because, look, Twitch doesn't actively pursue copyright unless they reach out to someone. You know that, right? Yeah. But they do know when you're playing copyrighted content because the moment your stream ends, they'll mute the VOD in the sections that you're doing copyrighted stuff. Yeah. So they're aware of it. They're just not actively pursuing it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, they're... But, but you and I both understand that, like, MasterChef, considering how many people have watched it in the past and how many people watched it free of scrutiny... Uh, it didn't seem to meet that metric, right? If the metric is whoever decides to pursue it, which you and I, I think, agree on, um, whatever they decide to pursue it, then then I personally thought MasterChef, until this very moment when they issued a DMCA, would have not met that uh, that standard. I mean, it always does. You're just getting away with it. It's just more so yeah, you can get away with but, it. But that's it. But it's the exact... It's almost the exact same as saying, like, I'm getting away with having... Like I mentioned earlier, a photograph that I do not own behind me of the Queen and Obama. I'm getting away with having a, 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 a different rendition of Kermit the Puppet behind me. I'm getting away with having the Zelda Triforce logo behind me right now. None of these things I are things that I actually paid licensing fees for to have on my stream. But the reason why I do that is because no one would fucking, no one in the right mind would pursue that, even though they could technically pursue that. Uh, but that would make the space overall worse. Same with gaming. Yeah, I think that argument's dumb. I think you're you're saying that it, it's also illegal to do this. So like, hey man, this 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 master chef should be fine, but No, no, know, no, no. I'm stating that I'm stating that copyright laws if enforced are ridiculous. Copyright Cop laws if enforced to the max are ridiculous, of course. Yes. But yes. copyright laws as they're enforced from precedent from YouTube, which is literally going to be what happens to Twitch in 5 years and probably sooner than that based off what creators are currently doing are still shit. And about like $3 billion every year are wrongfully taken from creators because of the content ID system, which was put in place in direct reaction to the lawsuits that they got. Twitch yeah. is going to get lawsuits. You're going to have the same exact system put in place. And you're going to lose loads of income because I, and it's going to happen way sooner because how uh, people are pushing the boundaries. I don't disagree with that. I, I do agree with that. I think it's inevitable. But you are saying that I'm pushing the boundaries when my boundaries are 
No, you're not pushing the boundaries. You're calling me a fucking snitch for saying people are pushing the boundaries and like you're being like, oh, don't worry about it, guys. Hey, you, look. Oh well, yeah, because like, you, you were snitches. fucking, you were concerned the trolling. The real problems. This you're saying the real problems of people talking about it, not the people pushing the boundaries, is what you're doing. Because you're, you know, because you're concerned. <laughs> that's trolling. where your thumb is bricks. Okay. Well, the I'm farming you. I'm farming you. That's why. The problem was my 600,000 viewed video. Because I'm excuse. farming you. He gets 2 million unique viewers every stream, Hassan. Well, he I did. I suck my own dick if I got 2 million views of video. Okay, listen to me. Listen to me, okay? I'm sorry that you can't fucking drive in your car in the same way that we do out here on Twitch, okay? But having said that, um, it's not like... XQC wasn't, uh, you know, getting 2 million views on his unique viewers on his VODs for MasterChef season one through fucking eight. Uh, the only reason why it is now getting to this point is because many content creators such as yourself decided this was a good opportunity to make a YouTube video or even come out and fucking complain. And those complaints actually came from, uh, you know, uh, some people were genuinely fearful without recognizing that they themselves were also adding on to the pile on and making it a bigger situation than it actually was. And then other people were just making YouTube videos so they can farm that juicy, juicy ad revenue, which I don't even hate. I mean, I, look, I love you. Are you you're going you're gonna to do what you're going to do. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I'm going to, you know, just like I'm, I, I said you were dry snitching to fucking farm some, uh, some drama. You got, I think, two years. Yeah, two years. Two years before Twitch has the same exact system as YouTube. Damn, two more years, dude. Better, better take advantage of that. Milk then. it while you can, brother. <laughs> you know what's fucked about YouTube Content ID? I horizontally flipped and I changed the pitch of MasterChef, and they still claimed it. Damn, they're fucking good. So, and I was watching you. I was watching you react, and it still got it. That was, yeah, that was, you know, that 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 is ridiculous. It um, would be a sad day. But, when by the way, happens. you understand though, right? Like that, I do think. Um, I do genuinely personally believe that like, uh, you can't make that argument to fucking corporate executives who like nickel and dime everything regardless. Uh, so they would never actually be like, yeah, you are kind of correct that this probably is generating hype from an audience that would never ever in a million years know or care about MasterChef's new seasons or other properties. Right. Um, but the reason, but video game companies recognize that. And that's what I base my, uh, statement off of. While it's still a violation of copyright, it, it does actually help uh, overall for the newer seasons. I don't know how much it moves the needle for them, but it, I'm certain it does. I think it's not even worth saying because it's, it's basically like, hey, man, me making a few hundred K off MasterChef was actually good. <laughs> It, you can't even say it from your PO. No, 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 no. I am. I am quite literally saying that because ultimately it doesn't matter. I'm going to watch some other shit. It. It, it, you're, that argument makes no sense because it's like, that argument makes no sense because it's like, yes, you are foregoing a certain percentage of the revenue that you potentially could get by literally fucking uh, allowing some people, like releasing your IP and allowing some people to actually fucking uh, watch. Um, uh, allowing some people to watch uh, freely is one that works for me, okay? And uh, the we pay you an exposure is like a really triggering statement for a lot of people that fucking lose their minds. But you and I both understand that the we pay you an exposure concept is so fucking powerful that the entirety of the video game industry, a multi-billion dollar industry, literally thrives off of that. So much so that they've even changed games. Not only do they allow uh, streamers to fucking stream their uh, video games, and this also is single player narrative focused games as well that you're technically spoiling if you fucking play. Um, Are you saying we should keep doing it to the extent where like we push it and then fight for it and then bitch until- No, like, we'll never win. We'll never win. I personally do think that like one, uh, more and more people as a consequence of this, are more and more like on the younger side, creatives are probably gonna say, I'm releasing my IP. So those people are gonna start getting, like Video Game High School, the guy who made Video Game High School, is uh i think he came out and basically said you know you guys can stream my shit i don't give a fuck right it's great it was jimmy just was like the some the show yeah yeah um just like some other uh, uh musicians have said the exact same thing like bb no money for example he's an independent artist he's not beholden to the record labels and he's There's like yeah play all my music between people overtly giving permission because they understand what they'll get from it and then doing it and then saying Hey, don't worry about what I'm doing. Trust me, you're going to get dividends in the future from this. This is going to help you big time, brother. 
Yeah, I mean, but we do that for everything is what I mean. We do that for small yeah. content creators and we do that for large content creators. And we, I, and I personally believe that is the reason why I don't have a problem doing it. Do you understand? Do you understand that the only way you make money is with the top of the hour ad break, which is live right now, everybody. <laughs> Got a minute ad break coming for oh, you. Oh, if you want. Yeah, that's right. And Ludwig and I are about to get into a really big argument right now. So I'm going to pay all this argument right now by running that 60 second ad break. Unless you subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. That was great. It's not the only yeah. way I make money. The, mo the way I make money is subscribers. Like This shit's it, easy, bro. Which is the stupidest way to make money as you which, and yeah, I have. I know that's the way you make money because I've seen your Twitch deal. Love mouth. Okay, dude. Let's yeah. not. Let's not bring that up. Okay. Yeah. Let's not. I know how you make money, bro. I yeah. wouldn't even call so, it making money at that point. Honestly, everyone calls us on rich. This guy is P Omega Lol Omega Lol R. He's poor as fuck, dude. Okay. I'm not, but like. <laughs> It's just You're that Twitch gets talk. Twitch definitely benefits a lot from my existence on the platform more than I benefit from being on the platform. I make more money Your for Twitch. One flight TP head ass house is is insane that people are making a fuss about it. No, first of all, I don't have one ply. How dare you, <laughs> bro? It's half a ply. That's not true. I have great I can toilet ask paper. Bro, to come in to like give me a little extra, you reuse it. You like put it in the dishwasher, bring it back. Yeah. Um. But hold on, let me just run the abric. I totally forgot. But uh, so look, my point is I, I've always done this. Like the reason why I don't feel bad about it at all is because I, I have the same mindset for uh, video games as I do for movies. Single player video games is the same concept as a fucking movie. It's like transformative when you're reacting to it in the exact same capacity that you play a video game, right? Um. And they understand the benefits of it because they are, uh, it's a younger, newer industry that like grew alongside Twitch. Whereas the entertainment, uh, the, the movie industry, on the other hand, does not give a fuck. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like they just don't yeah, care. No, I, I, I want Wild West Twitch. That's my favorite Twitch. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, we'll know because... There was certainly, like, Wild West Twitch to a certain degree was not good either. I mean, there's, like, I don't have a problem with, like, TOS. Someone said XUC got banned. I clicked on it. He's not banned. You liars. I mean, in terms of copyright. Oh, yes, 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 yes. For sure. Not in terms of the social aspects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The social aspect it. is actually pretty good. Like, uh, I don't have a problem with that That kind of, uh, you know, terms of service. But I, the, there's a couple problems. One... There's no way to monetarily take away money from creators and give it to copyright holders. So instead, they just ban you, which is stupid. Like that you bro copyright and you get banned as a result. That yeah. seems weird to me. There should be like, ideally, they set up a system where if you take copyright, your ad revenue from the day can go to a copyright holder and you don't get banned for it. I think it's a decent future. Yeah, what that'll be abused that? too, just like it is on fucking, uh, you know. Just like it's absolutely fucking used and abused on YouTube as well, which $2 will happen. $2 million wrongly given uh, or taken away from content creators in 2016. What? Uh, oh, 3.5 billion, you said? Yeah. I think it was um, 2 billion in 2016. I don't think that the numbers are probably higher today. Most likely. Um, I think like, I, I do think that, wait, what the fuck? Cutie Cinderella might... Side chick says otherwise. Hello, we love the idea of you watching HGTV on Twitch. See, it's already happening. It's happening in your fucking household, Ludwig. Is this real or is this a meme? Am I falling for the no, meme? No, this is real. This is real and it's oh. hype. And watch HGTV. Oh, so instead. some so some companies are fucking recognizing that it's actually smart and brilliant. Great. It was weird because they they like reply. She like tweeted. They replied to her tweet three different times and then DM'd her the next day. That's awesome and that's smart. And I do think that like. Some other media companies will recognize that that's free advertisement that other people literally pay for. And then we'll get to a point where people will actually start paying for uh, Twitch streamers to watch their shows and shit. No, okay, uh, chat, I'm, not, I'm being misrepresented because Hassan never watched my video. My entire point was that I'm on board with reacting. I think people are... No, he, he's lying. Chat, he's lying. Necessary. And definitely, oh no matter what you God. do, do not watch his video. Oh, do my not, God. Do not give this dry snitching man... The, what is the, a dry snitch as opposed to a wet snitch? Uh, dry snitching is like, I mean, the way I'm using it, and maybe I'm wrong, is like uh, when you're, when you're like snitching. 
because you genuinely hate that person is one thing. Dry snitching is even worse because you're like, you're actually narking uh, from a point of like, you know, concern trolling, but you don't actually give a shit. No, I'm wet snitching. I hate you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um but yeah so many people got so mad at me for saying that where they're like there's people who are like oh you're making seven million dollars a year watching master of like dude i've watched three seasons well not couldn't even finish the third season that i was gonna watch but it, like this is not a uh a, a major component to my stream and uh we got a dmca takedown notice and it's over it's done and now it's the era of HGTV and Property Brothers. Yeah, hey, exactly. That's let's go, dude. Let's what fucking go. Yeah, but most people are are you know they think we we hate one another. So now you saying that only uh, makes them think that as well. Damn right. But yeah, I do. Destiny's here's the after this. Here's the part where you and I agree, though. Uh, even though I think you think MasterChef falls under that umbrella as well, I think watching anime uh, that is like super paywalled. That's not good at all. That that is actually poking the bear. Watching full movies completely unacceptable. Completely fucking poking the bear. Um, the only reason why I thought Master Chef was one that we could get away with, and therefore underneath uh, the bar, was because other people had done it in the past and had done it for a very, very, very long time, and that they were not super fucking litigious with their with their uh, copyright compliance. So I thought that it was below the bar you understand all, and and i was wrong y yeah and you'll constantly be wrong because we're playing in a game of fuck around and find out and so you think you're right but you're gonna fuck around and find out you were absolutely wrong and then one day get dick down but until then god damn it property brothers till death well yes but also uh fuck around and find out is again like you and i both agree is something that we do regardless right it's something that we yeah. do non-fucking stop it's kind of it's kind of what me. makes the internet not, a beautiful I'm place you. i'm on youtube i so I, I i couldn't even if i wanted to but i don't want to because my morals and ethics don't line up with that oh <laughs> so you I mean there's care. a copy there's a copyright enforcement mechanism that's automated that hold is holds you accountable that's what you mean I didn't it's know the content ID was also a substitute for your morality. <laughs> In part of the negotiations, this was, I was like, please double content ID me. Yeah, yeah. They were like, make sure that I can't even watch someone else watching something. You know? That's my dream. Yeah. But I, but, but you and I both, I don't know. You, you understand where I'm coming from, right? Like, I, I hope with respect to yeah. like older seasons of television shows that like no one gives a fuck about. Like I watched Black White. Uh, the Ice Cube uh, TV show that was fucking awesome about like, and there, were, there was a lot of commentary on it. Technically, the clips of that, if edited appropriately, could absolutely fall under the category of fair use. Um, whereas like the, the live stream broadcasting uh, component of that is not pre-edited, so obviously it wouldn't. But even then, why the fuck would anybody be like, it's not even in circulation anymore. Do you see what I'm saying? So why would they, why would anybody pursue that? Same with older seasons of MasterChef that only generate hype for the newer seasons of the same property. We are aligned in everything except you place blame on LSF chatters and then people talking about the issue and I place blame on the people pushing the boundaries. No, I think, no, I, I place blame on people pushing the boundaries as well. I just personally did not think that MasterChef, uh, older seasons of MasterChef was pushing that boundary. No, I, I absolutely do place blame on people pushing the boundaries as well. Um, like, I, I don't think... I, I just said it. Watching full movies is pushing the fucking boundary to a degree where you're absolutely going to get fucking clapped. Watching, uh, watching new seasons of a TV show that's like currently in circulation, right? That is poking the bear. That is mm -hmm. pushing the boundary. So, so I do agree with that for sure. I just don't think that older uh, seasons would have ever been um older seasons of like watching a show that isn't even being taken down on mass from youtube uh was was ever going to draw this kind of controversy or ire if it wasn't for a lot of people who are manufacturing outrage because like do, do we do we agree on this do you think that like all the people that are fucking talking about like how angry they are do you think that they're like actually fucking angry like do you think that they care about the corporate bottom line who give me an example 
when someone on LSF says, um, these millionaires are making millions and millions of dollars off of, like, reacting to fucking other people's content, like, uh, you know, what about the residuals that the sound guy was supposed to get from that, huh? How is that being a good socialist, you fucking piece of shit? You're making money off their IP. Do you think that guy legitimately cares about, like, IP law and, and wants to in enforce IP law to the maximum degree? I think they're absolute non-factors in the outcome of the situation and that they are just having fun little drama discourse. To I mean, people are, yeah, people are fucking guy. literally tweeting at the companies and shit. You know what I mean? So, like... Also non-factors. The companies aren't seeing that. So, why do you think it happened now, uh, despite uh, people watching MasterChef for a very, very long time? Do you not, do you not think that, like, controversy uh, was, was partially responsible for... I mean... I'm pretty sure... Gordon Ramsay and Fox is probably in negotiations with Twitch to partner together. And then from that partnership, they probably just caught wind. Because mm. it's not Gordon Ramsay seeing a tweet. It doesn't fucking have anything to do with it. But they are. I don't think Gordon Ramsay sure seeing a tweet recording. works in that way. I think Gordon, Ra Gordon people... Ramsay seeing a tweet. I mean, Gordon Ramsay's not going to see a tweet and then make a call and be like, get these Twitch people out of here. It's more so that they have open negotiations with Gordon now. And so maybe it's just Twitch. Uh, being like, hey, let's clean this up. Or it's maybe like, hey, what the fuck is No, 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 no. I, I got a DMCA. I got a takedown notice, and it's directly from Fox. Yeah, so it's would, not I, Twitch, I, let's clean this up. I would it's, presume it has to do with Twitch being in negotiations to do some sort of live content with Gordon. I could see that, for sure. I, I think that that is in the works. Um, I could see that being in the works, for sure. Uh, there have been, you know, metas of like reacting to other shows where like, you know, those very same shows and those very same networks still market uh, on the platform itself, though. They have like big marketing agreements and even like larger ad campaigns that have even, uh, you know, they have larger ad campaigns with Twitch while, you know, there's still people watching that sort of stuff. So I think that either that or everyone at Fox just watches my pog tent. And, and then they were like, oh my God. No, I don't think you were personally. No, 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 no. I don't think it's you personally. But I do think that like when shit like this trends, right? When shit like this starts trending, um, of course, if the other party uh, wants to and a mega corporation is always going to be like, yeah, what the fuck? This is unacceptable. Let's make some money off this or let's stop this happening. Um, they, will, they will use the legal rights that they have. Um, yeah. So I think that's, I, that's what I think. I think that it legitimately was, first of all, we both agree. They have every right to do that, right? They have every right to the MCA, of course. It's their legal right, okay? The reason why they didn't do it for a very, very, very long time is because I think they just didn't give a shit. They just didn't care about older seasons. Uh, I can't prove this, though, because I can't... Um, I, I don't know if they... I don't know if they ever actually fucking uh, Gordon Ramsay into the streamer life. Looks like it's time to get Gordon Ramsay into the streamer life at Twitch. Can we make it happen? Hashtag next level chef. Yeah. So the real person responsible is Trisha's birdie. I think. <laughs> oh no. Come or on, selfishly bro. or selfishly come going on. Bro. No, I'm just don't kidding. I'm kidding. Trisha. I'm kidding. She's, she's great. She's great. That's no, a joke. She's a phenomenal home chef trying to compete with the best in the world. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm obviously kidding. I'm obviously kidding. You son of a bitch. I deleted the tweet because he snitched by showing it on stream. Wait, what? Damn, Damn. bro. I'm sorry, Damn. cutie. Damn. Snitch behavior, Hassan. Mm, I, is this you? And Is this the hey, Boyfriend Girlfriend team snitch. retaliating currently because of all the negative, <laughs> because of all the negative association that everybody has with having you, uh, you know, be known now in perpetuity as the, as the dry snitch, snitch wig? Bro, hey man, we're snitches together now. So hey, let's do our car shop, shop and stream sometime in the next. Yeah, week. next week. We'll get it done. Snitches only. Okay. All Am right, and and, and yes, Go, uh, everyone on L7 is right. We hate content. each other. I, I fucking hate you. Yeah. Also, Tom Scott guaranteed a hundred percent would hate every content piece you make and I make. Oh, Pawn Stars? No, no, uh, Tom Scott would hate every content piece me and you make. Wait, you really? Oh, 100%. I don't, I mean, it seems like he's actually pro copyright. Like I, at first I thought he was like talking about how ridiculous copyright is. And I think he's like, he, he it's like impossible not to criticize copyright because of how like fucking over it all encompassing it, it is. But now I, uh, in the middle of the video, I started to recognize that he was saying like, no, it's actually good.
I think he's more so like this is the universe we live in, and then just breaking copyright isn't a criticism against copyright law. It's just being entitled is probably his perspective. Did you ask him? Is it true that you asked him to be on Mogul Money? I asked him to be on Mogul Money, and he replied, "You know, hey man, looks great, but just so you know, this is a hundred percent not okay, and could get taken down at any moment." Uh, is that why he refused to come on it? No, it was because he d couldn't go to America because COVID. Well, oh. like that was, I mean, pro probably. Good. We got to keep the British out of here, honestly. <laughs> yeah, and then I replied <laughs> and I said, it was the wrong email, idiot. I didn't even <laughs> want you to come. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks for coming on, Lud. All right, man. Have a great rest of your stream. Not shithead. Um, <laughs> bye. That was Ludwig. Uh, you can't really find him uh, on Twitch anymore because he's in a different car. Trisha Birdie said, oops, I'm sorry, dude. Wait, what? No, I don't care. That's crazy. Everybody's being crazy, okay? This is not a big deal. This is a completely normal and understandable part of this process that uh, every Twitch streamer, especially ones that like stream as much as I do, is always going to have to deal with. Okay? It's always going to happen. Tom Scott is an anti-capitalist. Is he or is he not? Don't worry, I'm going to start restreaming his stream on Twitch on a burner. See how he likes that copyright? <laughs> So yeah, the thing we're going to get back to that right now. The thing that I don't get is that there are some episodes of similar shows on which full are posted on official YouTube channels. Are those okay to watch? No, because it is all entirely reliant on, it is entirely dependent on whether, whether the owner of the copyright chooses to enforce it or not. Also, one other thing I will mention about this is that this DMCA debacle has 10,000 tweets, and yet I have 25,000 fucking tweets to show you further where people's energy lies on issues like this, okay? I just want to point something out here. Motherfuckers do not care about copyright. They care about how far it goes in shitting on someone that they fucking despise. Okay. Ha, you're mad, aren't you, nerd? I'm sitting in my one bedroom apartment couch, seething my life sucks, but today the billion dollar production company flexed their muscle and you're mad. The little guy like me won today. Me and Elisette will still celebrate with frozen pizza tonight. Yeah, and I hope the middle of that frozen pizza is fucking cold, dude. Guess what? Charlie says, no one likes DMCA. No one is licking corporate ass and applauding them for banning Pokimane. It's just common sense. You can't stream a full TV series slash anime slash movie franchise on Twitch. No studio will ever say, yeah, if you buy our Blu-ray, you can stream it to 40k people who haven't. It's fucking common sense. Did you watch Charlie's video? Not yet. We are going to, after this Tom Scott video is over. The next step is a lawsuit. Maybe for the uploader, but more likely the same would happen as all those years ago. The big media companies would go to YouTube and say, you're allowed. You talk way meaner to us than you do, Ludwig. Yes, because I have the context of knowing Ludwig. Sometimes when there are chatters who I've known for a very long time and they say something, I also recognize it because I'm a human being. I know Ludwig. I love Ludwig. I've hung out with Ludwig. Okay. I have experiences that I have uh, formulated with Ludwig that is entirely different than someone coming in here and being like, ha ha, you just got absolutely ass blasted by the mega corporation and that's a good thing. So yeah, when someone says that, I have to ban them. When Ludwig says that, I know Ludwig. I've known Ludwig's sister for even more years than I've known Ludwig. I have a relationship with Ludwig. I've kissed Ludwig, okay? So clearly, that is the difference. I am not, unfortunately, I'm not an empath, okay? I'm not an empath, and therefore, I can't fucking, you know, as an empath would, 
figure out what the intentions are when someone is fucking trolling in the chat. Usually I'm very open-minded and I still respond to people, but, um, you know, if you're, if you're behaving in a way that is consistent with like all these other fucking pieces of shit on the internet, and I can't tell if you're trolling or not because I haven't seen your name enough times pop up in the fucking chat, then I might ban you and be mean to you. Allowing this to happen. You're making money off this. We're going to sue you out of existence. Sadly, it's not about what's fair or what's just. It's about the arrangement that YouTube and the big media companies have come to. It's not ideal, but under copyright law, current copyright law at least, I don't think there's a better option. And I don't want to sound like the grumpy old man complaining about the kids these days. But yes, when I started on YouTube 2006, there was no monetization option. Creators could not earn money on platform at all. And that was fine because it was a miracle that someone was offering to do the incredibly expensive and difficult job of hosting video for free. One of the reasons there aren't any serious competitors to YouTube is that it is ruinously expensive to run a video hosting site. You either have to be a subscription service or one of the world's largest advertising firms. A lot of folks, particularly younger people who have only joined YouTube in the last couple of years, have a different baseline for this. They think that they have the right to upload long compilations of their favorite videos with maybe a few words spoken between each clip and make loads of money from it. That That is something that they are entitled to do and that any copyright owners who complain are censoring them and putting in false claims. <sighs> yeah, okay, yes, I am the grumpy old man complaining about the kids, but under the current copyright system, those kids are legally in the wrong. Maybe not morally, that's a different question, but legally, they are- Yes, yes, but they're not morally in the wrong, so who cares is my take usually in this sort of circumstance. Okay, we might have Moist Critical come on in a brief moment after this video as well, but I gotta pee first. ...are in the wrong. There is an enormous distance between what the law says and what the world's actually doing. And that is where most of this tension comes from. So, how do we fix it? I have to be so bad! Hold on. We need three things. We need to update copyright law. We need a good small claims court for copyright, and we need to shorten how long copyright lasts. So first, updating the law. This is a big goal, but the entirety of international copyright law needs to be rewritten to reflect what's fair in today's world. Everyone will have a different opinion of what that is. Uh, I'm actually fairly conservative on it. I'm not convinced that we should massively widen the definition of fair use because every bit of freedom you give to individual creators also makes it easier for big companies to rip them off. But I'm not going to say where the line should be drawn. It is a job for consultation and conversation where everyone is at the table, not just the big publishers. And if completely rewriting international law seems unlikely, then it's still possible to push for changes. In 1990, one article by one judge swayed opinion among the US legal community and helped change the most important factor of fair use from whether it was commercial to whether it was transformative. It is entirely possible that new publications like that could help improve things. The judge's conclusion in that article also makes an excellent point. There should not be a clear and unambiguous definition of fair use, what he calls a bright line standard unless we have a good standard. And we don't have one. The border of fair use has to be messy because people and creativity are messy. True. Sorry. Imagine someone putting on a relatively small YouTube video and walking away for it for peeing. Clearly you don't care about the video. You're just using it for content. I don't know how you can defend this behavior. It's immoral. Uh. <clears throat> So if fair use is going to be messy and if it- Look, I care more about the content that you're watching more than anything else, okay? I care more about that than monetization strategies. I care more about that than fucking making money. I care more about that than anything else. If that wasn't the case, Ludwig wouldn't be making fun of me when he saw my fucking uh, contract that I have with Twitch. One of the immediate uh, examples of that is that I straight up personally only run one minute of ads at the top of the hour. I'm not going to run it right now. I already ran it. Like 
Because why? Because I think it cucks the fucking content if it's seven minutes of fucking ads an hour. Okay? And it cucks the content if I'm constantly doing fucking sponsored streams rather than speaking my fucking mind. That's why my primary mode of monetization is subscriptions. Okay? So, yes, of course I could pause the fucking video when I go pee. Okay? I could just go, I, I could do this. I could just do this and wait while I'm going out to pee and pause the video. But that cucks the content. You are not going to enjoy that, okay? So that's why I have to take these fucking precautions and continue streaming while I'm peeing, okay? It's for you. It doesn't do anything to me. I don't give a fuck. It is for you. So stop complaining. It will inevitably lead to conflict. Let's make resolving that conflict quick fair and accessible. This is already starting to happen in the United States, but badly. The UK has one of the world's friendliest copyright regimes for individual creators. We have the Intellectual Property Enterprise Court, which is mainly based here at the Royal Courts of Justice in London, and it's a specific court to deal with cases about copyrights and patents and trademarks. And that court has a small claims track. If you're an individual photographer or video maker, you can do the research, file the right forms, follow the right procedures, and issue a claim as a litigant in person, which is the fancy British term for without a lawyer. I've done it because a major company ripped off one of my videos. This court is designed to be more friendly for individuals. The procedures are more relaxed. It's almost like mediation rather than a court, except that if all negotiations fail, then there is a judge issuing a legal order at the end of it. It is stressful, it is hard work. You need to get all the details right. You should probably get a lawyer if you're gonna do it. But if your job is basically reading hundreds of pages of nerdy detail and summarizing it into something the world can understand, then yeah, it can be done. It is really nerve wracking. Like most of the people who walk into the admin building of one of the biggest courts in the country without a lawyer to try and file a claim, and they don't have the best grip on reality, but all of them think they do. And there I was, walking in, no lawyer, thinking I had a case, thinking I had a grip on reality. Statistically, the odds weren't in my favor, but I filed successfully, and the company settled with me. They paid me to drop the claim because they were in the wrong, and they knew they were in the wrong, and they knew I could actually get it to a judge in exchange for a bit of work and a court fee of just over a hundred pounds. That's awesome. There is a plan to do something like that in the United States. Maybe that's why he thinks uh, that like some copyright is not bad, which again, kind of goes along with what I have said as well, which is that like copyright that is there to protect smaller content creators from larger content creators stealing their shit is, is it's good. It's a good thing. That is, if it wasn't a good thing, that's not what the fucking mega corporations would use when they're justifying why they do it. For example, famous case Napster v fucking Metallica, okay? When they were making arguments, they were making arguments at the behest of tiny artists, but it was for fucking Metallica. But it's a little bit more ridiculous when you're like, hey, we as a mega corporation believe that like, or a mega brand that, you know, has a billions of dollars in revenue are fucking mad that... Is that what he said in, uh, when I peed? Okay, well, there you go. Didn't even need to fucking watch it. Because I already pre-watched it. That's right. Huh. <sighs> anyway. But, uh, as I was saying, it's like, that's just fucking how it is. This is the reason why big corporations don't... It's like when fucking... It's like when the Republican Party that is advocating for, uh, mega corporations and the billionaires and the wealthy turn around and say... We are out here defending small business owners. And some of you dumbasses hear that out and go, yeah, that's right. They are defending small business owners. And that's precisely what is happening when you fucking, uh, you know, advocate for big DMCA and the long dick of the law and the corporate oligopoly structure that basically determines what constitutes fair use and what the copyright laws are. Let's continue. At the time of recording, the Copyright Alternative in Small Claims Enforcement Act, the CASE Act, is passing through government. Unfortunately, it has massive flaws. Using the new small claims track is voluntary for both parties, which means that if you want to sue a big company, that company can just choose to opt out and require you to take the expensive path. And to quote an explainer, if the losing party does not comply with the judgment, the prevailing party can bring an action in federal court to enforce it. So if you actually want the judgment to be effective, you may have to take the expensive path anyway. In short, all the power is still with the people who have money. 
And also, Charlie's coming after this. Uh, he he's already in the. I think he's like in my Discord or something. He was saying that he, um, like he's watching the stream. Oh, and it means that it's now much, much cheaper for big companies to try and enforce unfair claims against large numbers of individuals. It's a so-called default judgment mill. The Case Act is not a fix. It's a step sort of in the right direction, but it's not great, and it may well lead to more problems. There's also a wider problem dealing with this across international borders, but that's a separate issue. Having a working small claims process in the United States would help address the massive imbalance between the rights of individuals and the rights of huge corporations, at least on this platform, on YouTube. And even if that's just in the US, from there, the world will follow. So then finally, we shorten how long copyright lasts. Yes! Under current US law, if a modern work has an individual author, then its copyright generally lasts until death plus 70 years. For works by a corporation, it's 95 years from publication. There are a huge number of companies that number suspiciously has grown whenever it has reached a particular IP. That number suspiciously has gotten larger and larger and larger every single time, every single step of the process. Whenever there's a, there's a particular mice, a mouse in question, I wonder what that fucking IP is. Strange stuff, dude. Strange stuff happens complicated factors for older works because of the many many changes to the law over the decades but that's a decent rule of thumb and that's too long yes singer songwriter turned politician sonny bono the person who the copyright term extension act of 1998 was named after he believed that copyright should be forever that the great 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 ew that is nasty as fuck dude you are the fucking worst, okay? What a fucking awful, awful, anti-art, pro-capitalist, disgusting approach. Holy fuck, dude. Some of these recording artists are just like, they're insane, okay? You also got killed by a fucking tree? Wait, really? Grandchildren of Shakespeare should still be able to charge licensing fees for adapting Shakespeare's work, or more likely, those rights would have been sold to a corporation at some point, and Shakespeare Intellectual Property Limited would now be able to collect license fees into eternity. I think that opinion is so ridiculous as to be indefensible. If copyright lasted forever, if nothing ever entered the public domain, then yeah, someone would still have the final say on how Shakespeare could be adapted or performed. Perhaps you could perform it however you wanted, but only by paying an enormous license fee. Little community theatres like this? Priced out. Or perhaps someone would want to defend the Shakespeare brand guidelines and insist that all adaptations be entirely faithful to the original text. So, no Baz Luhrmann, Romeo and Juliet, without permission. No Ten Things I Hate About You, without permission. The Lion King? Very close to Hamlet, that you want to, want to avoid that lawsuit. Making a reference to how all the world's a state. Because ultimately, as I've said probably 700 times in this process, art is fucking derivative, okay? Derivative. Age. Fail. Needs a license. And if you think that's ridiculous, find any book that quotes one copyrighted song lyric. He had a bad taste to listen to celebrate his dying in a skiing accident. Disgusting chatters. Yeah, disgusting chatters. Maybe to introduce a chapter, there will be an acknowledgement somewhere that they've got permission from the copyright holder. The point of copyright is to allow people to profit from their creative work. I am not against copyright. I rely on copyright to earn a living. But the works that fall into the public domain are vital for creativity. And patents only last 20 years. 20 years before your patent expires and anyone can take your actual, physical, real-world invention and just churn out cheap copies for everyone. If you invent something that literally changes the world, great. You get 20 years to make all the money you can, and after that, you will be outcompeted by other people who can do it better and cheaper. But write a song. You get until you're dead, plus your descendants get another 70 years. That is ridiculous. And meanwhile, all the orphaned works, the obscure things where no one can track down the copyright holder anymore to ask for a license, well, they can't be archived, they can't be copied, they often can't be preserved at all, just because no one knows who to ask for permission. The longer copyright is, the worse that problem gets. And I know a 20-year copyright term that matches patents would never get through modern politics. When you have enormous corporations that earn billions from their copyrighted back catalogue, it is trivial for them to spend a fraction of that on lobbying to make sure
Now, this part, by the way, or this take, by the way, should also be uh, obviously expanded to uh, 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 pharmaceutical patents, right? But in the case of pharmaceutical patents, I think that that is like abysmal, okay? I think that that is so abysmal that it should be illegal and every single person that has ever enforced it and every single person that has ever advocated for it should be locked away in jail. This only fucks up art. And art is important, and it's beautiful, and it's entertainment, and it's content, and it fucking makes our lives a little bit better uh, when we're going through horrible shit, regardless, right? But that is nowhere near as fucking damaging and as hor horrifying as doing this to uh, pharmaceutical patents. Your copyright doesn't get reduced. I would like it to be 20 years. I would campaign for 20 years, but... I also know that it's not gonna happen. And to be fair, it does feel like the people who made the songs of the 80s and 90s, the songs that are still being listened to in this current nostalgia cycle, they should probably be able to make some money from that. So I would suggest 50 years. It's an easy number. It allows a couple of nostalgia cycles to happen. And it would mean that right now, the 60s would be public domain and the 70s would be on their way. The decades that are no longer pop culture nostalgia, but history. Packelval, Chopin, Beethoven, they should already be joined in the public domain by Dylan and Mitchell and Hendrix and Klein, Shakespeare and Shelley, uh, either Shelley, they should be joined by Lee and Heller and Orville and countless others, including the works that no one can trace the owner of because after 50 years, you shouldn't need to trace the owner of a work. You should just be able to use it. Anyone should be able to make a James Bond movie by now because they'd probably do a better job. Yes. The people who have already made ludicrous amounts of money would not- Oh! The other thing I want to say to the pro cappies, because there's a lot of fucking cappies in here, right? Like, there's a lot of trolls. There's a lot of people who are like, I love capitalism. I will literally suck a factory's cock if I could find it, right? Uh, like, oh my god, managers are the real heroes, yada yada. It is fundamentally just against free enterprise to uh, engage in this sort of rent-seeking behavior. So there's that too. It like doesn't even make sense from an ANCAP perspective to have these sorts of fucking patents. Because like, yeah, compete, motherfucker. Compete against other places that are actually fucking, uh, I don't know, producing uh, better content then. Compete against them. What do you mean, IP? What the fuck is that? So you are not even beholden to your own worldview and the own, your own values that you fucking uh, believe in, supposedly. How do you counter someone that says it motivates companies to do more research? Uh, it doesn't. That's how you counter it. Uh, when you look at novel chemical compounds and their creation, uh, the, the, the by and large majority, or not majority, but the per capita novel chemical compounds still come from publicly funded research rather than private research. Uh, most of that still relies exclusively on uh, publicly funded research. And it, there should be no profit incentive or profit motive anywhere near that because people are not psychotic, vulturous monsters who are like, I'm gonna invent something specifically so I can make money. Some people simply want either the, the uh, props or because they wanna fucking save human beings, okay? So delusional take, I don't know if he's saying that to me or not, but uh, that is the unfortunate reality for you, Chatter, if you do le legitimately believe that the only reason why people fucking make uh, medicine or invent shit is because they wanna make money off of it, a lot of money off of it. I mean, the greatest example of this is insulin chatters. I don't know if you know this, but, they, but the, uh, the inventor of insulin sold it for a dollar because he did not think that the patent should ever be sold for profit. And yet, here we are in the United States of America paying out the ass for insulin if you have diabetes. <sighs> the unfortunate reality is that Capitalism is the way of the land. Okay? No matter which way you cut it, we live under a global capitalist organization of the economy. And because of that, it impacts the way we see ourselves. It impacts the way we interact with one another. And because of that, we unfortunately forget that collective action is at the heart of human achievements and accomplishments just as much as or even more so than individual acts. Okay? 
But because we live in a capitalist organization of the economy and it impacts every facet of our lives and it makes us feel the way that we do about ourselves and about our fellow men and women, that we mistakenly assume that selfishness is the most important natural human phenomena. But to be human is to overcome nature. Okay? Let's continue. Not be able to. By the way, this was a 42 minute video and I've been watching it for two and a half hours. And that's precisely why I fucking transformed this shit. It's really funny when LSF oftentimes is fucking shitting on me for constantly pausing and constantly fucking giving my take. And then they turn around and they say, all you do is watch YouTube videos and you don't do anything. You just never pause the YouTube videos. You're just stealing the content. Suck my fucking dick. <laughs> Make as much anymore. Sure. But the artist's work, the thing they're supposed to actually care about, could be enjoyed and built on by everyone. And the few artists from back then who are still popular will be absolutely fine, continuing to make money from their world tours and merchandise and public appearances and newer albums. And an entire new generation would get exposed to music and writing and art that might otherwise be forgotten about. A shorter copyright term would badly affect perhaps a few hundred people in the world. The folks who created one hit song or one incredible book that is still bringing the money decades later and who are now relying on that money as their only source of income. It's not many people, but yes, the very, very, very few who fit into that category, uh, it'll suck for them. If royalties were their pension scheme, I mean, that's bad financial planning, but if they were thinking the one song they made in 64 will get them through their retirement, yeah, it's gonna be a shock. I do not believe that that's a strong enough argument to justify locking up all that creativity all that potential for the entire world for that long. No one's going to stop creating because they only get 50 years or 20 years copyright. Songwriters and authors and filmmakers and choreographers and, and YouTube creators, we make things because we can, because we have ideas and we want to show them to the world, not because we're thinking that our grandchildren might one day have a chance of getting a trickle of money from some future copyright license. So when I say that YouTube's copyright system isn't broken, I mean it. It's a reasonable patch, a bit of duct tape, holding together a system that's somehow still just about working despite being completely unsuited for the modern world. Yes, occasionally it goes wrong. When that happens, it should be fixed quickly and transparently. But the long-term solution is not to apply another patch on another patch on another patch on another patch. The solution is to fix the system that it's trying to work. I don't know why people thought I was gonna disagree with this. He, I, I do agree with him. Um, Content ID is a product of our insanely over-encompassing and oftentimes psychotic and counterproductive and anti-art uh, uh, copyright uh, laws that we have. YouTube is simply a platform that is trying to abide by those restrictive uh, legislative measures while simultaneously allowing new content to exist on its platform. So uh, I do agree with him that... You know, the world's copyright system is fucking fundamentally broken. Obviously, the reasons for why I feel that way are Marxist ones. I don't know if uh, Tom Scott is also uh, of that same mindset. Maybe not. But, um, yeah, it, we, we do end up agreeing on this in the end. Look around, because that's the problem. YouTube's copyright system isn't broken. The world's is. All right, that's it. Remember to like, comment. Oh, come on. Over on Nebula, I've got a new series. Here's the trailer. He's an open source guy, lol. Okay, there you go. I, 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 I liked him a lot. He seems like a very serious dude, and he probably would fucking despise me, considering, like, like what he, like, the slight against Ethan a little bit. Like, if he thinks Ethan is unserious and, like, kind of, you know, eh, like that, then he's gonna fucking hate me overall. But, uh, but I like it. I like him and i like his content his videos are actually incredibly interesting